What's up you legends? Welcome back to another video. Uh, today, slightly different one. We're not actually going to be driving a car. We are going to be looking at all of the details of what every single uh, button on the interior does, on what all the little aerodynamic details around the outside of it does. If you want to have a geek out on Porsche 992s, as I often want to, that's what we're going to do. As the sun is going down in the background here in Monaco, Monte Carlo, we are going to look at this beautiful Porsche 992 Turbo S, which is brand spanking new, 19 kilometers on the clock. That's why we're not driving it. The car is for sale and is being sold as new. So I was able to briefly drive it over here, but that was it. Um, and it wasn't really enough to give you a full kind of overview of the car. So I prefer just having a full geek out because that's what I like doing with these cars most of the time. And I thought I'd share that with you. So what have we got? We've got a light gray, cray colored 992 Turbo S. It's got some really cool, funky looking options on this. I'm sure you've noticed a few right there, but let's start from the back and work our way forward. Now, how wide this car is, even though it is two centimeters wider than the 991.2, it's actually less noticeable compared to the standard Carrera on the 992 because all of them now, all of the standard Carreras have the four wheel drive wheel arches. Before, wheel arches were much wider on the four wheel drive versions of the Carrera platform which of course the turbo is part of all turbos are four wheel drive um now all of them have that now so it's less noticeable when you see a turbo and a turbo s like this now one thing which is more noticeable is the new kind of exhaust that they've put on these this is the sports exhaust this is an option and it looks very much like the um gt2 rs exhaust outlets um exhaust tips that they've got now standard it comes with quad exhaust in a more square shape these, I actually don't think look quite as good, but they make the car sound better as we'll hear in a little bit. It's got a really nice spec round back here. We've got the sunroof, which gives this kind of like capsule feeling to the top of the car with the tinted rear glass. Makes just the top of the car separate from the rest of the body color and gives it that kind of low start. If the roof was body colored, I'm not sure it'd have that quite as much. That's a really nice touch on the spec of this one. Currently the wing is in its up out position so that can lie down right here so it's an active rear wing that can as i say come and sit down on the back of the car there right now it's kind of like a double wing as you can see one integrated wing there and then the active wing right there which changes depending on your braking and you can have it in a few different modes that is new as well these slats on top of the grill which really well <laughs> hides really well the engine because you literally cannot see anything we'll open this in a little bit to show you but you cannot see anything when you're um, in this thing, when you open this thing up. They've changed the direction, so now it's much more vertical. Before, it was just these horizontal slats. Now, they've switched to these vertical um, slats right there. Now then, what else do we have on this car? So we've got, obviously, the brand new rear running light right there. So this is, you know, comes back, arcs back to some of the older Porsches and looks really, really cool. I really like the way they've done that. The lights are also much more, it used to be an option called translucent lights, now much more um, black and white than they were before. All of this was kind of red, and obviously you only had that part of the rear light rather than this whole middle part before. I think that looks really cool the way they've done it. They've also added the Porsche logo in 3D. So before that was just text, which you'd have on the back of the car. That is now a 3D finish, which in this one is specked out in black and looks awesome. I really like what they've done with this. We've then got the rear diffuser, which is finished in black. The slightly plasticky looking and feeling stuff. Um, yeah, not the nicest material in the world, I'm not gonna lie to you. Uh, you've got an, uh, an aerodynamic little detail out here in the air outlet. Um, really uh, uh, cool to see all of these little details as you go around the car. They've done a great job with that. You've got your reversing camera as well, which is hidden right above your license plate here with your uh, parking sensors and tow, tow hook right there. Um, you've then got another actually outlet here, which serves to, as we saw on the 488 piece doing a video like this recently, serves to get all the turbulent air out of the rear wheel arch. And also just looks kind of cool. Uh, we've then got, well, let's get onto it. These rims, kind of sport classic uh, rims. These are an option. They look great. And now I'm not sure they would work with all the cars, but with this spec, they are just fantastic. So yeah, really, really thumbs up for, for whoever spec this because it is so, so cool. And I'm not sure if you had a blue or red or green finish on the car, if it would work quite as well, but here it looks awesome. Um, we've got obviously um, 
carbon ceramic brakes. I say obviously because when uh, Porsches have yellow brake calipers, that insinuates that they are carbon ceramic, which you can also tell from the brake disc when it kind of looks like Parmesan cheese like that. When it looks a little bit kind of crackled, that's when you know that it is carbon ceramics. Huge brake calipers, as we'll see around front as well. Just above that, you've got this air inlet here, which is to cool down the turbos. Obviously, twin turbocharged car, 650 horsepower, 0 to 16, 2.7 seconds. That beast, which is lying back there, is going to need a lot of cold air. And an air inlet like that on each side is one of the ways that traditionally the turbo cars have gotten air to the engine now it's not exclusive to the turbo so before if you saw those air in litter meant you're either staring at a turbo or a gt2 rs now you can see those on a gt3 rs for example um which means that it's not exclusive to turbo cars there's also on some naturally aspirated ones looks cool they've actually sized that down compared to the old generation one of the reasons is because they've managed to improve the efficiency of the air that's going in that outlet through little details like as stupid as it may sound these door handles so the door handle you can tell from from this angle is completely flush with the body of the car that means when the air is coming by here it doesn't have this huge handle blocking it and pushing the air outwards and missing that air inlet or going above the flush door handle allows the air to go straight in that air inlet. and when you unlock the car the door handle comes out and that's when you can use it properly very smart cool little trickery right there let's see it go back in awesome stuff now we've got side skirts that aren't really worth talking about to be honest plasticky looking small side skirts uh, a few little cameras here also to help you when you're parking 360 cameras and then these huge brake calipers around front very cool very flat design on them um, but they are absolutely massive so yeah very very nice looking car from pretty much any angle i prefer it from the back or from the front as well the front they've actually changed i'm um, sorry for the shadow by the way that's with that low sun over there in the distance you're gonna have to deal with the shadow occasionally in the shot um they've changed the front a little bit they've made it a bit more square and that's a thing we're going to see on the interior as well so the front of the car is much more square than on the last generation mainly from this boot line you can see how that's kind of yeah, almost much more perpendicular than it was before, whereas it was much more rounded. Um, they've done that with a few things, you know, even just the little details around here. So you can see that it comes down, bang, bang, pretty square there. So, um, no, they've done a good job with the design, I feel. I do prefer the back of the car. It's got these new X sights, they call them lights, um, which, yeah, you have all sorts of different options for the lighting of this car. And when you put the wing up at the back you also get this little spoiler which comes down which is actually filled with air um all around it and costs about four thousand euros to replace so it looks like just a little piece of plastic but that you do not want to hit um and is a really cool little piece of engineering right there that comes down when you're in sport plus mode whilst we're down here we can also mention the difference in the daytime running lights compared to the 901 9 yeah 901.2 sorry um which surround this kind of uh, yeah, again, plastic uh, line, black line that goes around here. Two daytime running lights. Uh, we've also got, obviously, the adaptive cruise control. Really, really smart system on the Porsche so that, you know, you set a speed and then it will hold you at a certain distance behind the car in front if you get up to one whilst at your set speed. Really cool. Uh, you've got also cameras all over the place, as I say, for the 360 and your parking sensors around front. Just show you in the boot of this car because it is one of the impressive things about these is how quick they are. As I said, 2.7 to 6, the performance that you get in only the highest of highest end supercars, yet you can still use it uh, as a daily driver if you so wish. And things like a boot of this size help that. There's a big boot. You can fit two to three little small suitcases in there. And it's just a really, really nice yeah, thing to have. You've got little cubby holes here as well. Boot obviously in the front as the engine is in the back. And there is a lot more space if you put the rear seats down because this is four seat is a big word but it has two small seats around back which you can see if we open here on the passenger side you can see because if we pull this little leather strap there you've got these rear seats so they're good i mean you wouldn't do london to monaco in these it's for adults but if you've got kids small kids young kids um if you need to drive a friend back from the restaurant one evening or something like that short trips you can do that or 
if you just want to use them as extra storage you can do that too by just pulling up here bang seat goes down and that is a huge second boot basically right there which you can use just slam that back into place ready oopsie how does that work there we go that's it cool so that is um, an added piece of practicality for this car. You've also got these really cool little hooks on the back of the seats, um, which are for hanging your jackets or things like that if you don't want them getting all creased whilst you're driving to a meeting. Now the seats themselves are 18 way adjustable, I believe. You've got things like, look at this, that is just for under your legs. <laughs> that can move forward. You see that little detail? I don't know if you can notice it. There you go. So little details like that, you can adjust the seat however you like. And the seats are actually a lot more square than they used to be. Very comfortable, heated and ventilated, but a lot more square in their design than they used to be. Dividing opinions on that, but I actually think they look pretty good. Now, let's go around the inside. Um, I'm going to take you off wide angle mode, actually, because the quality with the light, which is the sun's just disappeared behind that hill over there, is going to get... Oh, great so let's get back into the inside of this looks awesome very very clean finish this one in black napa leather um turbo s has the, have the extended leather pack so you've got leather all the way above the dashboard on the top end of the doors it's got this carbon as well now this is an option um it's not the best well it's fantastic quality and beautiful weave and everything but for some reason it just looks like a little bit fake's the wrong word but yeah just look you might see what i'm talking about better here but you know when people put like um carbon wraps on their car it looks a bit like that maybe because it's a matte finish carbon fiber but anyway it's a very nice finish but not my personal favorite you've got three-way memory seats right here and then obviously you've got your mirror controls as you come in you've then got your lights which basically you'll just leave it in auto and keyless go now i know that looks like a key but the key i've actually got in my pocket and you open the car like that and then traditional to porsches you actually turn the key on the left and you have this kind of little makeshift key which is there so you don't need to get the key out every single time so they stayed traditional to their history but adding the new technology let me just put my seat up a little bit okay now let's switch the car on so i can show you all sorts of things i'm going to turn the key here is one of the first big talking points now 911s have always had five pieces of information here the dashboard always has those five um how would you call them it's someone help me out in the comments anyway the five circles right with cayman and boxster for example only the three so this being a 911 we've got the five but now only the rev counter is analog the rest is all digital and you can change actually through different um screens that you want to have in front of you different settings you can even get your navigation on there you go it was on that right screen right there the left screen has the time temperature and speeds um and then obviously analog rev counter which you all know and love so that is for the dashboard so you can change it as i say through all sorts of different things there you know get your trip information general vehicle information performances there's loads of different things you can do and then you've got just your fuel consumption and range and things there steering wheel nothing particularly new pretty similar to what was on the last generation um, to be perfectly honest with you, you've got your voice control, your favorites button, and this controls that right screen right there. Phone, and this is your volume, as you can see, right down on that other screen. Um, and then when things get really interesting is actually here, with this little spinny wheel, I call it, um, which changes you between all your different driving modes. So wet, obviously for when it's raining, normal for everyday use, sport, where I just got a little bit silent there because you can hear the exhaust opening. Um, that is when you want to be a little little bit more aggressive. Sport Plus when you're feeling very aggressive and an individual where you can set things up the way you want them. So for example, you can have the suspension in its softest mode, but the exhaust and um, gearbox in an aggressive mode. We then come right to a screen, a very, very big screen, a uh, touch screen which is very responsive. They've really nailed um, well, the general kind of feel of this screen, the quality, the quality of the image, sorry, um, is all really nice. The response is really quick. 
Um, it works really well. The only thing that bothers me with this screen is just how much it's doing. It's sometimes a little bit hard to navigate. So for example, this is where you control your rear spoiler. So if I press that and keep that held down, you can hear it. I don't know if you guys can hear it. Making all there we go. That's how you do the spoiler. It's a bit unnatural. I might just be a bit old school, but I find it a bit unnatural. Um, we've also got all of our different modes that you can go through here. You can see your trip and things like that. Now, what's quite cool is here we can actually see. Ooh, if it allows me to focus, we can see what the car looks like with its four exhausts. So that's the standard exhaust system. I actually think that looks a little bit better. I'm not gonna lie. Anyway. You can change things like the exhaust from here as well on the screen, or there are a few shortcut buttons here. So this is your lift. So your front lift only, it doesn't lift the rear, only the front. That's controlled through that button, it's very quick. You've got your exhaust open and closing from there, your hazards, your traction on and off, and your Porsche Dynamic Chassis Control button. Now what that does is that controls the amount of body roll you're getting effectively. Um, and it's a really smart system, which I haven't been able to drive the car hard enough to test it out myself. But the way it works is effectively, it just keeps the body flat. You know, it keeps the, the front end a bit more planted, allows you to push a little bit more on that front end and build your confidence in the car and, and just keeps it more flat, allowing you to hold a bit more speed through the corners. This is one of those cars which really hides its game well. You could get around with this and people wouldn't know just how quick it is if they don't know much about cars. So yeah. We come down here where it's this kind of tactile finish um, yeah, section where you actually still have to press but when the car is off the one thing which is a little bit annoying with this is it leaves a lot of fingerprints. If you're OCD like me that is a little bit frustrating, most people probably won't notice that. And obviously pretty self-explanatory, all your temperatures and speeds, things like that. Um, yeah, nice finish, very quality feeling uh, materials right there, I don't know if you can get that just from the noise. You then come down also to the gear shifter and gear knob, whatever you call this, um, which actually was quite a talking point because you don't have a manual mode anymore. You used to be able to just kind of slap it to the side there and have a way of changing gear um, from here up and down the gears, not just through these really nice, actually feeling very solid paddles. That was useful for people, you know, let's say if you were like mid drift and your steering wheels turned in whatever direction and you lose track of where the panel you need is. I don't find myself in that situation too, too often. So it doesn't bother me too much. I use the panels most of the time anyways, but I do understand why it could potentially be slightly frustrating. This is where you select obviously park. And then when you're in drive, if you want to select manual, you just press here and that allows you to use those flappy paddles. We'll leave it in park because if we go into drive now, we'll be straight in the sea. What else do we have? We've got the sunroof controls. Sunroof is right here. You press this button and that allows you to open that all up completely, which is a really nice, really nice touch. We can close that up straight away. Um, you've then also got a way to just open the rear of it by pressing this button. That just opens the rear. Press that once and it goes back down. And then you've got a sunshade, which comes over, boom, like that which is quite nice if you don't feel like having the sunroof open, you can do that. Then we've got, as I mentioned, heated, a three-way heated and ventilated seats. Uh, very nice, I'm not sure how much use it is if you put all three, or, you know, both on at the same time. Little kind of cup holder, key holder section, handbrake obviously, and this carbon fiber we were talking about earlier, which is very nice, but I don't know, there's, Maybe it's the matte finish or the weave, I don't know. I may be being very pedantic, but for some reason it just, is it maybe just too good the finish that it looks fake? Anywho, um, they've taken the traditional Porsche cup holder system, which was on the old generations off. And now you've got that cup holder I showed you, showed you before and then this one, which pops out of here. I love the old system, so I missed that a little bit, but I mean, this is just as functional, isn't it? So it doesn't really matter at the end of the day. There we go. I'm gonna put it in Sport Plus mode so that you can hear what it's like at its lightest, loudest idle. Um, because it sounds pretty cool, actually. Um, yeah, it's not bad at idle. I mean, these things can sound cool if you put an exhaust on them and stuff. Stock, they're not the you know, greatest sound things in the world. But that angle right there is just beautiful. I'm gonna go back into wide mode quickly and sign off. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. 
it was just a quick little look around the car all the details let me know if these kind of videos are interesting for you guys even though we're not driving the car if you like to geek out as i do um, or if it's, you just want to see me driving let me know in the comments down below thanks for watching please subscribe and we'll see you again with many of these very soon all the links for this specific car will be down below cheers guys bye bye